Welcome back to Defining Moments. I'm Suzanne Quast, and my guest today has a remarkable story. His name is Matt Dawson, and he is seeking seven world records in one year. He is going to trek the North and South Poles and climb the Seven Summits, which is known as the Explorer's Grand Slam, pilot a plane around the world, row 2,400 miles across the Atlantic Ocean, and drive a motorcycle across the Mojave Desert all in one year. Why? Well, Dawson was an investment banker, and like a lot of us, felt unfulfilled and that he wasn't living his greater purpose. So after one life-changing defining moment, Dawson decided to quit his job and shortly after created his foundation, Dawson's Peak, which is going to combine these global expeditions and sponsored athletes like Dawson to not only raise awareness and money towards select charities, but also to inspire each and every one of us to face and climb the mountains that are in our lives. His inaugural project is called Seven for Soldiers, and 100% of the proceeds go to two amazing veteran charities, Merging Vets and Players and Hope for the Warriors. Guys, this is one hell of an episode, and I am really honored to share. Here are his moments. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm so good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And we should give a disclaimer. I have known Dawson for 10 years now. Yep. And it wasn't until the last three years that I knew his name was actually Matt Dawson. Well, actually, James Matthew Dawson. Uh -huh. But he goes by Dawson. He's kind of like Madonna. <laughs> You just need... Friends have called me that for years. It just kind of stuck, so I just went with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, to start for the viewers, I really think we need to get our arms around what it is you're doing. So let's start with the, um, the Explorer's Grand Slam, because right. that's going to be in the beginning part of the Correct. year. Correct. Correct. So, so basically, is, is we're kicking off, uh, we're slated to begin in January. We may actually accelerate that a little bit, maybe the last two weeks of December, just for, okay. for timing purposes. But uh, we'll start with the Explorers Grand Slam, and that, uh, as you mentioned, consists of the North Pole, South Pole, and the Seven Summits. So with that, we've got a, de a very uh, definitive schedule that we're going to try to keep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to start with Antarctica and uh, Mount Vinson, which is the tallest mountain there in Antarctica. It's so like I said, the last two weeks of December or you know, early January of 2020. Yeah. Right. And the Seven Summits are climbing the seven highest mountains on each continent. It's, it's, the, it's the highest peak on each continent. So seven continents, so seven peaks. And there's right. been five people that have done it within one year. Correct. So, so collectively around 62 people in history have, have completed the Explorers Grand Slam, but only five people have ever done it in a single year. So I'm trying to become the sixth person in history to do it in a single year. And then I think his name was Colin O'Brady. Colin O'Brady. Yeah. He did it in 139 days. Exactly. Colin, and Colin, tell you what, is a, is a great guy. I've, I've spoken with Colin. I even called him up out of the blue and said, hey, you know, just cool. introduce myself. This is what I'm looking at doing. And he was gracious enough to, to speak with me on the phone, share some of his experiences. He just completed a trip across Antarctica where he set another world record, oh, wow. being the first man to go uh, solo, unsupported, unaided across Antarctica. So congratulations to Colin on that. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, I'm not trying to break Colin's record. Okay. He's a professional endurance athlete, and that's, just, that's not something we're looking to do. <laughs> but I just want, I want to get through this, inspire people, and raise the, the money and the resources for emerging vets and players and hope for the Warriors. And we'll consider that a success, you know, with regards to this. No, that's still remarkable. I mean, you look, you talk about the altitude, the Antarctic. What are the sleeping conditions like? Because I think about that a lot, because I'm sure in each place it's very different. Some places is cold and some right. is hot. It, it's every place is a little bit different. It's, and it depends on where, it depends on the mountain and where you are on the mountain. So, uh, for instance, if, if you're in Aconcagua, which is the highest peak outside the Himalayas, mm -hmm. which is in South America, down in base camp, it, it's not that bad because I've, I've climbed that mountain before. But once you start getting up north of, you know, 19, 20,000 feet and you're trying to sleep, I don't care where you are, it's cold. And you're just, you're in a tent, you know, and you're, and you're bundled up. And, you know, I have great, uh, great gear. I have great sleeping bags and, and warm clothes and stuff like that. But it's just, it's not comfortable. But the point isn't to be there to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's to be there, do what you're supposed to do, get in, get out. You know, and move on with it. Do you, and you have guides that go with you. Are you going to cuddle with the guides? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a two man tent. But I mean, it's a two man tent, and we utilize every square foot of that tent. It's, <laughs> the game is how far can we get away from each other in this tent? But I would yeah. imagine, I don't know, body heat. I, there, would... There's enough body heat in there. But, you know, the funny part is once you start getting up around 19,000 feet, when you wake up in the mornings, 
literally the entire inside the tent can be covered in frost. Oh my God. And it's not uncommon and, and you'll wake up and not realize it. So you'll bump the tent and it'll just literally snow inside the tent and everything now is covered in frost and it's just wet and it's that, that's your good morning. You know, at five, six o'clock in the That'll morning. That'll wake you up. That's how you wake up. So it's just, but it's just part of it. And so which of the seven summits are you most worried about? Yeah, it's, it's, um, I tell you, worry isn't the right word. I know what you're going for. It's, it's, it's you know, concerned, you know, okay. I think is, is the right word or, or attentive to maybe. Okay. Is that uh, first is Everest, mm -hmm. simply because it's Everest and it's, it's just a beast in and of itself. I've never been that high, you know, um, and also I'll be climbing with oxygen for the first time. Wow. And with that, it's, it's, there are certain things you can do there and to, to kind of speed up your, your process, speed up your time. Certain things you can't do, a lot of things outside of your control. So that it's just, that's like I said, in of itself, it's, its own kind of challenge. Uh -huh. But outside that, uh, Denali, which is the highest peak here in the U.S. and in Alaska, is the, cold, the uh, coldest mountain on earth where temperatures have reached minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Jeez. And so it's just, it's just, that's just a different challenge in and of itself that technically it's not that demanding. There's certain elements that are more technical than others, but you can get a storm that lasts for a week or two weeks to where it's just, just completely out of your control. You know, okay. so it's, it's that, it's, it's getting held up by those types of weather windows is something that, that's a little concerning. So, but that again, it's you do what you can to control what you can and what you can't control. You try to prepare for it the best that you can. Then you just have to deal with it. And you just have to let it go. Just let it go. You just, yeah. And that's great life advice, right? Yeah. You can only worry about what you can control. Yeah, I tell you this, this project is so big and there's so many moving components to this project is that you can't worry about everything. So it's, it's just from my personal standpoint, I have, I have a fantastic team around me. This is not just me. But from my personal standpoint, I, I try to prepare as best I can for what I can mm -hmm. and, and worry about what I can. But I know there's just a myriad of things I can't control and I just don't have the time or the energy to worry about it. And I just put it out of my mind and I'll just I'll deal with it the best of my abilities, you know, if and when I have to face it. And that's how we should all be. Well, it's, it's easy to say this. <laughs> it, obviously, it's challenges in my life where I do worry about things that I shouldn't. So I try to take elements of this and apply that you know, to my personal life as well. Yeah. Okay, so we have the first part, the Explorer's Grand Slam. Right. And then the second part is you're going to pilot a plane. All the way around the world. Yep. Okay, yep. and so, and you have one other guy doing that with you. I do. It's, it's a, a, a captain named Preston Kappel, and Preston is probably my oldest, or he is my oldest friend in the world. Mm. I've known him since I was probably one. Oh, wow. Only, only guy really in my past that I keep in touch with, and he and I have talked our entire lives, and uh, we've always had a dream of doing something big together. So now it's a chance to to come together and not only um, you know do something for hope for the warriors, emerging vets, and players, and try to inspire people, but it's a chance for he and I to finally come together mm -hmm. on a personal basis, which means a tremendous amount to both of us. What a bonding experience yeah. that will be. Yeah, and Preston's a, Preston's a pilot for Bank of America. Okay. Uh, he he's he's uh, got thousands of hours of experience, so he, it's a great person actually having the cockpit with me. And then the next part freaks me out, you guys. Yeah. So to be in a boat, what? how big are we talking here? The boat, it's about 25 foot. Okay, yeah. so 25 foot. So that's like from, it's, I mean. If you, if you say look at a, at a football field. Yeah. So every 10 yards is mm -hmm. 30 feet. So it's less than a first down on a football field. Are it, you worried about this thing capsizing? <laughs> I mean, should so, we be concerned yeah, about you? The way that it works is you have the, the, the middle of the boat is, is open. It's open air, open everything. But then each, on each end, there's a small cabin with a door. And the way that it's, it's designed is if something happens, you can shelter down these cabins, close the door, and the boat is even made to roll back over and, and to self-upright ah. or self-right if, if you do get capsized. Okay. Ideally, that's what's going to happen. But all, to, all, you know, uh, all too often, these things fail. A hatch blows. Something happens. You get hit with debris. There's a, there's a hole that gets, hit in the put, that gets put in the boat. Excuse me. So, you know, things can happen. It's just, it's just all part of it. And sharks and then yeah. also storms. I mean, yeah. these are, are, do you have moments where you are genuinely fearful? I'd say, uh, honestly, of, of the row is I'm not. It's, again, it's, you can't control if a storm's gonna happen, you know, a year from now. You can't, or when, you, and when you're out there, you can't control those things. And so it's just, you get the best equipment that you can, you prepare as well as you can, and then it's just, you know, you just ride it out and, and do your best. And speaking of riding it out, <laughs> then you end up riding through yep. the world's hottest desert. Yeah, well, one of the hottest deserts, yeah. 
And this is a really cool part, I think, and it's such a great finale. Right. You have some celebrities. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about the finale? Yeah, yeah, certainly. And this is one of the things, I'm glad you brought that up, that I'm most excited about because, again, this is not about me. This is not about one person or whether one of, uh, one of our other athletes going forward on a different project. It's about inspiring people as a whole and raising these, these money, the money and awareness for our charity partners. So with the, the Mojave Ride will be the last component of the, of the uh, expedition. And we're looking to bring five veterans from Merging Vets and Players, five veterans from Hope for the Warriors, so they can feel like they're very much a part of the project. And then to make this a really a once in a lifetime experience, we're bringing 10 to 15 celebrities and professional athletes. Mm -hmm. So we've already gotten responses from Gerard Butler, uh, from AJ Buckley, who's both a very good friend of ours. Yeah. And he's also an advisor to Dawson's Peak, uh, Gary Sinise, who helped us out with uh, with the uh, with the voice work? You know, we'd love to get Gary involved yeah. if, if he'd like to make it. And then also uh, Jeff Stoltz mm -hmm. uh, is going to be joining us. So it's really make this a once in a lifetime experience for these veterans to see men and women that they've seen you know on television or or in sporting events that they can come together with, share their stories, share this experience. And it'll be about uh, 750 mile ride, around five days, but wow. just a really a, a real bonding experience to bring everyone together. 100%. Has yeah. anybody ever attempted to do this? It, in terms of all of it together? All of it together. No, no, not, at least not that I'm aware of. But it's, if you look at, for example, for, uh, example, the Explorers Grand Slam, since you only have 62 people that have ever done that, I've been through every bio that I can find you know, on all those people, and that's kind of how we determine who's done what and, and kind of how we we're able to kind of put this together a little bit. Mm -hmm. So to our knowledge, no one's ever attempted, you know, anything like this. And your training for this has to be completely rigorous. It's a lot. And daunting yeah. and every day, it, right? It's a lot. It's, it's, I don't have any days off. It's, I mean, literally I train every single day. And some days are, are more intensive, more involved than others. Uh, every day is kind of blocked off to where I don't have really specific themed days. So for, every, for example, every morning uh, up from about 6.30 till noon, I'm on the mountains climbing or I'm in the pool or I'm, I'm uh, you know, in the gym on cardio equipment, stuff like that. And then there are different blocks mm -hmm. throughout my day that I'll perform different types of training exercises during those blocks. And I, you know, I watched Free Solo with um, Alex Honold. Uh, Honold, yeah. Honold. Yeah. And he had Tony Caldwell right. actually help mentor him. Do you have people that mentor you through each of these different facets. I tell you, I do. It's, it's you know, given that I've been, I've been doing all these things for years, except for the row, uh -huh. that uh, people that I've climbed with in the past or, or people that have kind of climbed on, on um, world-renowned levels, you know, these types of athletes, I've been very fortunate to speak with several of them. Uh, one of them is uh, Eric Burns. Eric uh, is a friend of mine for, for many years now. He's an Oakland Athletics Hall of Fame, UCLA Hall of Fame. He's used to be a professional baseball player who's now uh, started competing in, in long distance, ultra marathons, things such as that. He just completed a project called Let Them Play, mm -hmm. where he um, performed a triathlon across the entire United States oh, wow. of America. Wow. So it's, 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 and I try to utilize these people and, and their experiences really more so for the mind preparation than the physical preparation. Because what you'll find is like a lot of things in life is once you have a certain physical kind of um, skill set it becomes all mental. Mm -hmm. And it's this, this may seem like it's a physical challenge, and it is, but it's more a mental challenge than a physical. And it's probably 80% mental, 20% physical. Yeah. So it's, it's, I try to surround myself and, and, and communicate with people that have performed on these levels to, to ask them, how did you get to that level? How did you continue to stay in that level? Because anybody can do it on a, on a nice, pretty, sunny day. Mm -hmm. But when you're beaten down, when it's scared, you know, when you're scared, it's dark, you're cold and wet and tired, then how are you going to perform? You're right. You know, so it's about getting out in front of it and try to have that prepared in my mind. Which I, you know, I've had, I've known you now for a long time and I'm, I've seen the physical transformation right. that has taken place, but I've also seen like the mental and emotional transformation oh, that's yeah. taken place. I've become a softy. But no, softie. like, <laughs> no, but Brene Brown talks about this with vulnerability and vulnerability being so much uncertainty. Yeah. But on the other side of that, that's where joy and empathy yeah. and creativity all really originates from. And I feel like this moment for you this is what originated and this is what came from your now vulnerability, right. which brings me to, okay, so you've described everything that you're doing. Right. Can you talk about the defining moment that brought you here? Certainly. 
it's you know it's, it's something that that always I always kind of go back to in my mind is strength and surrender is the more I've surrendered to, you know to life to my feelings and emotions and experiences the more I've gained from it and the stronger that I've become and that's a, a 180 from my initial way of approaching things of being just very hard and, and direct and and uh, you know unforgiving that type of thing mm -hmm. so so really a couple years ago if you were to uh, to look at my life I, w I was comfortable, I was relatively, relatively successful, but I always had this sense of, of like a numbness inside of me. I didn't know what it was or really how to deal with it. And in 2016, I lost two people very close to me and I knew that, that I needed to make a change and this was the time to make the change. So in order to initiate that is I tried to remove myself completely from what I knew. And okay. I traveled to Nepal and I spent three weeks hiking alone around Nepal. And I had no climbing, hiking experience before that. And there was no TV, cell phone, internet, radio, music. I avoided people as much as I could and really just tried to get back with myself. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, uh, long story short, is I, I was able to join a, a, a Buddhist service. And with that, I just experienced something that, that it's very difficult to describe, just kind of a, a breakthrough or, or a reconnection with myself for the first time and just had an absolute breakdown. I'd say it's a breakdown and a breakthrough <laughs> at the yeah. same time to where, I mean, I was 240 pounds, had a beard down to here, and I mean, I was, did. I was a man's man, you know? Yeah. And I was literally on the ground crying uncontrollably like a baby. And this happened several times throughout this one particular day. And I came to understand that that was the first time I ever truly connected with myself. Mm -hmm. And this was at 38, 39 years old. I'm yeah. embarrassed to say that, but I'm happy to say I finally, no, I finally did that. Honest. Yeah, it is. It took me a long time and it just, and what I came to understand was that pain that I'd felt and that kind of breakthrough I had, it helped me realize the perspective that I'd been using to that point to meet my needs was just wrong. Mm -hmm. I've been looking from the outside in to say, okay, just, it's maybe some more money or another trip or another car or, or whatever it was. And it just, whatever you put in there, the, the hole would just kind of morph around it and you'd still have an emptiness. Yep. And I realized that it was, it's, you have to work from the inside out. And that's just not me saying it, it's just that's, that's the answer, is you have to work from the inside out. And that change in perspective enabled me to understand that my passion or that, that numbness I'd felt was because I had no purpose in my life. Mm. As I was living a life, but there was no reason behind why I was doing what I was doing. And it helped me to understand that my passion and purpose is in helping others to determine and live their passion and their purpose and to hopefully avoid that pain and the confusion and frustration that I'd faced for so many years, because that's a horrible place to be. It is, it's very lonely. Exactly, it is. And you think you're the only one going through it. Yep. No one knows what you're experiencing. And it's, it's horrible. And I don't want anyone to, to go through that. And I went through it for almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so that's the ultimate goal here. Pri the ultimate primary goal of Dawson's Peak is it's not about our athletes. It's not about the expeditions. All, the, all that we are is a vehicle. And it's to help people understand and to find that inspiration to find whatever their purpose is and to live that and to live a fuller life, elevating not only themselves, but everyone around them. How would you suggest to people to find their purpose? Yeah, it's, I think that's probably the, the most common question yeah. you know, that I discuss. The thing that worked for me and the biggest thing I can say is, is you've got to get quiet with yourself. Mm -hmm. is, is, it's great to read all the books and to, to go to the lectures and talk to people and do all that kind of stuff. But ultimately what worked for me and I think will work for, well for others is you've got to find a way to get quiet with yourself because all the answers that we seek, we have them. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of, of reconnecting and relearning, I believe what we already know because throughout life, I think we get disconnected uh, incrementally from ourselves. I agree. You know, and, and, but obviously along the way you speak to people and you learn things and you find ways of reconnecting and maybe expanding what's already in there. But it just is to get quietly because that's that's ultimately what I accomplished with Nepal was it gave me a chance to get away from everything and to sit there and face myself and the things that I needed to face. And a lot of the things I wanted to avoid, you know, things were coming up from when I was five years old. Wow. You know, 10 years old, like these little things were just coming out of nowhere. And it was understanding that, uh, accepting it, appreciating it for what it was going to teach me. And that it, it finally enabled me to start, you know, changing that perspective. And I'm telling you, ever since then, I've never had more peace in my life. I've never been happier. Aww. I hate to admit, I mean, I'll, I'll watch a movie or I'll watch a commercial and I'll cry at the drop of a hat now. You don't it's, even know <laughs> this guy. Like, it's, was, yeah. Wow. It's, I'm, I'm, it, I'm oh. getting goosebumps talking to you about it now. Is I'm, I laugh. I'm like, I'm just a softie now. It's just that 
I've never felt more joy in my life. Mm. I've never felt more appreciation. It's even in the, the middle of the worst training where I'm just, I mean, I'm hurting, I'm sweating and they're just spit and snot and it's an ugly scene. It's I'm appreciative in those moments to have that opportunity. Mm. It's just, it's unbelievably how, how fortunate that I am. And to hopefully be able to share that with others and to help them, you know, uh, feel that sense of peace and joy that I've come to feel and to share that and to elevate everyone collectively, that's what it's all about. Wow, so peace and quiet, meditation, probably a journaling, yep. alone time, yep. and also the vulnerability comes, with vulnerability comes joy, and also then gratitude. It is, it's, I'm telling you, it's what, what I mentioned earlier is, is strength and surrender. Is that that's always come and it takes, it's easy to sit there and just to be kind of closed and hard and you know aggressive and all that, but when you can actually surrender to yourself and to the environment and just have that level of vulnerability and just listen and just be appreciative and see what you can learn from yourself and from others and relearn what you have in there that you've kind of closed off and put away in little places like we all do. Yep. That's, that's what's done it and, and I know I'm getting long winded but the last thing I'll say about it is I used to always think of us kind of like uh, submarines or houses that what, if something was bothering you, you could just put it in a room, close it, wall it off. <laughs> oh no, don't yeah, worry about and that. It's not it gonna affect anything else, right? Yeah. It's like, I'll just, I'll bury oh, yeah. that in here and nobody will ever know about it and I won't deal with that until I wanna deal with it. And it's not, that's not how we're built, no. is we're more like, a, I know these are bad analogies, but we're more like a swimming pool in a sense that you put a little dropper in the deep end and it's gonna impact and, and influence everything else. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you're going through, it's gonna impact and influence every other part of your life. So, you know, you need to deal with it in, in a healthy, productive way that can help you move forward. That's just what I'm trying to do. What a beautiful, like, I feel like I've witnessed your transformation. Okay, well, look into the camera here. Okay. And please tell everybody where they can find Dawson's Peak okay. and the two amazing charities that all the donations and all the proceeds yeah. are going okay, to. Okay, thank you. So, as, as Suzanne mentioned, 100% of the net proceeds that we're raising, we're donating to Hope for the Warriors emerging vets and players. So you can get on to, uh, to their individual sites or you can find out more about the project at dawsonspeak.com. And uh, you know, we are looking for, for individual sponsors and also corporate sponsors, that's how we're funding this. And as a uh, 501c3, all your donations are tax deductible. So please, if you have any questions or wanna get involved, you can find us through the website or uh, and, you, know, you can contact me directly through the website as well. I hope you guys are as inspired as I am. You can face whatever mountain is in your life, just like he's doing with the mountains in these expeditions. Thank you, guys. Breaking waves of change.